Hi, welcome to another episode of PSRE Science Made Simple. I'm Chen Hong and I'm a PSRE Science Specialist here at the Pig Lab. In this video, I'll be analyzing a passing examination question on the topic of energy. I have also prepared this question for you to download for free by clicking a link in the description box below. So let's get started. Question 8. Kelvin drops a ball from P. Whenever you see an object being dropped or released from a point, this question is usually from the topic of forces or energy. I want you to scan the question for me and tell me which topic is this question from. From the statements, we can see that this question is from the topic of energy. And energy is not new to you. In P4, we have learned heat energy and light energy. And also in P5, you have learned electrical energy. It is just that in P6, you are introduced to new forms of energy. First of all, we have potential energy. And there are three types of potential energy. First, we have gravitational potential energy. And what factors affect gravitational potential energy? Number one, we have height above the ground. Number two, mass. The second potential energy will be chemical potential energy. Now, do you know where is chemical potential energy stored in? Alright, think about this. What do you call your best friends? You call them BFF, right? So for the acronym for the object that possesses chemical potential energy is BFF, where B stands for battery, F stands for food, the last F will stand for fuel. Last potential energy will be elastic potential energy. Now under what circumstances will an object possess elastic potential energy? We know that when we stretch or compress a spring, that is when the spring possesses elastic potential energy. So the first factor affecting elastic potential energy is how much the object is being stretched or compressed. And the second factor that affects elastic potential energy is the stiffness of the elastic object. And in the topic of energy, we learned that potential energy can be converted to another form of energy, allowing the object to move. Now, what energy does the object possess when it is moving? The object will possess kinetic energy when it is moving. And for the last energy that we are going to talk about, we are going to think of a car that is driving on the road. Even if you do not see the car, I'm sure you can hear the car. When you can hear the sound of the car, which energy am I talking about? I'm talking about sound energy. So these are all the energies that you have learned before. So now we can look at the diagram and understand which energy will the ball possess as it is being dropped from P and when it bounces all the way until U when it stops bouncing. So let's look at position P. Now at position P, before the ball is being dropped, we see that the ball is being held at a height above the ground. Now this is a very big clue for you as to which energy the ball will possess. So at this point, we know that the ball will possess gravitational potential energy. Now, at which other point do you see that the ball is at a height above the ground? We see that at R and T, the ball is at a height above the ground. Therefore, the ball will possess gravitational potential energy. But what do you realize about the height of the ball above the ground for positions P, R and T? You realize that all the height is different, and this will affect the amount of gravitational potential energy the ball will possess. So at which position will the ball possess the most amount of gravitational potential energy? At position P, the ball will possess the most amount of gravitational potential energy because it is at the highest height above the ground. So at which other position will the ball possess the least amount of gravitational potential energy? It should be at position T because it is at the lowest height above the ground. So let us go back to position P. When Kelvin drops the ball, this gravitational potential energy will be converted to another form of energy. Think about it, when the ball is dropping, we know that the ball is moving down to position Q. When the ball is moving, which energy will the ball possess? As the ball moves down, the ball will possess kinetic energy at position Q. And this shows us that gravitational potential energy is being converted to kinetic energy and I will label energy conversion with an arrow and a C for conversion. So now let us look at position Q. We know that when the ball drops to position Q, the ball will bounce back up to position R and we can see that kinetic energy is going to convert back to gravitational potential energy. However, I want you to compare the ball at positions P and R. At position R, will the ball possess more or less gravitational potential energy? We see that the ball will possess less gravitational potential energy as it is at a lower height above the ground. 
Now, shouldn't the ball bounce back to the same height as position P since kinetic energy is being converted back to gravitational potential energy? Why is there now less gravitational potential energy when the ball is at position R? Was gravitational potential energy lost somewhere? To answer this question, let's think about energy conversion again. Less gravitational potential energy must be converted from less kinetic energy when it is at position Q. So where did this amount of kinetic energy go to? When the ball hits the ground, you will surely hear a sound. So this tells us that some of the kinetic energy has been converted to sound energy. Not only that, when two objects, in this case, the ball and the ground, comes into contact and rub against each other, there will be friction. Now we are going to mimic the ball and the ground rubbing together with our hands. Now I want you to rub both your hands together. Do you hear a sound? Yes, you do. But not only do you hear a sound, once you rub your hand fast enough, how do you feel? Do you feel your hands getting warmer? Yes, your hands are warmer now. And with regards to warmth, which energy do you think I'm talking about? For warmth, we are talking about heat energy. So at point Q, not only some kinetic energy is converted to sound energy, some kinetic energy has also been converted to heat energy. So when some kinetic energy has been converted to other forms of energy, this will result in the ball possessing less kinetic energy at position Q. Therefore, when it bounces back to R, less kinetic energy will be converted back to less gravitational potential energy, causing the ball to bounce back to a lower height above the ground. At this point of time, we can look at the question to answer which of the following statements are true. Let's look at statement A. The ball has the greatest amount of gravitational potential energy at P. Now, look at our annotation. Did the ball possess the greatest amount of gravitational potential energy at P? Yes. So statement A is correct, let us put a tick. Now let's look at B. The ball stops bouncing because all of its energy changed to sound energy and heat energy. At which point did the ball stop bouncing? The ball stops bouncing at position U in the diagram. When the ball stops bouncing at U, does it still possess kinetic energy like position Q? The ball will not possess any kinetic energy. This tells us that not some, but all of its kinetic energy has been converted to heat energy and sound energy. So with this understanding, let us look back at statement B. Do you think statement B is correct now? Yes. Let's look at statement C. Kinetic energy is changed to gravitational potential energy when the ball moves from S to T. Now, have we discussed the ball moving from S to T yet? No, we have not, but do you realize that the motion of the ball from S to T is similar to the motion of the ball from Q to R? And at Q to R, what did we say about the energy conversion? We say that kinetic energy is being converted to gravitational potential energy. So this will be the same for positions S and T, where kinetic energy is being changed or converted to gravitational potential energy. We can see that statement C is correct. Last but not least, let's look at statement D. The ball never bounces back to the height it was released from because some of its kinetic energy is destroyed every time it hits the floor. Now, earlier on, we have already discussed when the ball was dropped from P to Q or when the ball bounces from Q to R, we say the energy was being converted. So when this statement says that some of the kinetic energy is destroyed, we know that it is wrong. It is being converted to another form of energy. And at which part of the annotation can we see some kinetic energy being converted to other forms of energy? We see that at position Q, we have written that some kinetic energy has been converted to heat energy and sound energy. So I want you to put a star at this statement to match to statement D to know that energy is not destroyed but it has been converted to other forms of energy. So can statement D still be true? Statement D is not true anymore. So we have left with statements A, B and C which are true which gives us our correct option to be option number 3. Thank you for watching and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, do give us a thumbs up. If you would like to check out more videos by us, do click on the links on the right hand side. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye!